Hey guys, welcome back to the page in Do Not Wing On Bed. I am the Kettle Headman. I am the Headman of Kettle. I am Mitchell Mutumba Simata, aka The Induna. Welcome back to the page. Today I want to touch on an interesting topic that I've been thinking about, that I've been uh, simmering about for a while. That one person asked, "What is the role of agri? What is the role of youth in agriculture? What is the role of the young people in agriculture?" Well, me, but I don't know if I can consider myself still a youth, but I'm 30, so I, one could still consider me a youth, probably. So, what is my role in agriculture? As a young person in this field that has been considered to be a field for old people for the longest time, and also been a field that's been considered just a field for men, I do advocate for more youth involvement. What I mean by youth involvement is allowing the youth to get involved in this, I mean youth involvement in the different spheres of agriculture, youth involvement in meat production, of agric uh, meat production, youth involvement in horticulture and all these other spheres. We need to be given a seat. That's the only way you, uh, of, of, that's the only way you allow a sector to evolve. Like I always, I give this example every time I'm invited to this uh, conference and ask me what's the role of the youth and I say, you need young people in a sector, if you want the sector to still survive for the next five or six or seven years from today, that's the only way any, any other sector would survive. The agriculture, I mean, the manufacturing sector has survived this long because young people have been getting involved and have been helping it evolve. Same thing with the, with, 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 with the, with the, with the, IT, with the IT sector. The IT sector is today developing new technologies that could make life easier for human beings on this planet that we call Earth. And that has been all through the innovation of young people. And as long as agriculture does not allow young people to the table, to have a seat at the table, so young people can bring, can bring in new ideas and be innovative, we are not really going to evolve the sector. We'll still be talking about the same things. How do we improve our farming? How do we end drought and so forth? But young people need to be involved. Because if agriculture wants to survive the next 10, 20, 25, 30 years, it needs to lose this stigma of it being a business for old retired teachers, old retired politicians, old retired people, old retired doctors, old retired police officers and military people. It needs to lose that. I have always been speaking and every time I'm invited to these conferences and I speak of agriculture, I always tell them, get young people on state-owned farms at the age of 18 or 25. They might not have the financial, the finances, of course. I know most of us look at the finances, eh, but the finances, where is this boy going to get the finances to run and manage this farm? I understand that I know for a fact that a farm is expensive. I know. I have my experience right, being on a privatized, uh, camped off uh, piece of land. It's expensive. You know, you have your water infrastructure you care about, you have a fence infrastructure you care about, there's your workers you need to care about, there's your livestock you need to care about. So there's all these things. But that should not be the reason why we sit down and say, automatic, ultimately, we do not want young people involved in the field of agriculture. It should not be the reason. I said, and I remember when I was at the conference where I said, get the youngest person to be resettled in this country. If you want to be serious about youth involvement in agriculture, age 18, being resettled on a farm, then we can talk. Then it shows that you are serious. A young person, being resettled on a, on, a, on a commercial farm or inheriting a farm from his father or trying to buy a farm at age 18 is what we call a long-term investment. I know it can go two ways because I know a lot of, a lot of, a lot of senior people sit down and say, politicians, senior people sit down and say, but, but if we give young people the farms and we give them the land, how many of them will really farm productively? Most of these young people aren't interested. Some of us, we are struggling, we have children, we are struggling to get them to go to the farm. They don't even want to go to these farms. I said... It is a lot of things. I, I can't speak for your kids, but I can speak for myself. Why would I lose interest in agriculture? Is number one, when I do not have a seat at the table, when the agricultural policies that are being spoken about that will affect everyone, I'm not being involved. I'm not being called to come and give my opinion. It is always Dr. Who, Minister Who, Professor Who, PhD holder, Mr. Who and Mr. Who. You never hear young people. That's what I said. That's the first thing I said. In this conferences, it's always senior people. You do not see young people. And that's the first problem. How will we make sure that this sector survives from your generation, which was the generation which was born before independence, that fought for the liberation of this country, the generation that was also the generation that was born from you guys, which was still experiencing some form of some form of apartheid, and then you get the born freeze. 
Now, how are the bond freeze and the generation in the AMA 2000s, how are the bond freeze in the AMA 2000s going to be able to take over the sectors and run it? It's by allowing them into the chambers and allowing them at the table. But by also being willing to invest in these young men and women. It is difficult when a young person, I remember such as myself, this was uh, 2010. No, not 2010. 2013 14, 2013 14, 15. There, I was trying to get into the universities to go study agriculture because that's my passion, that's my interest. I, I, it's interesting, it's not really a passion, but it's something that's interesting. I saw, hey man, I find this interesting, and something that's interesting sometimes if you, if you, if you apply yourself to it, you can end up becoming good at it. So I said, no, let me apply myself. Then I applied, I was unable to get it. Fine. I was unable to get into the two established universities in this country. What's the next option? Go abroad, but it's expensive abroad. My parents do not have that money. At that time, we were struggling because we had an, because I had a, we were struggling, you know. My, my elder brother was studying already abroad, and it's expensive. Most people would know if you have studied outside the country, it's quite expensive because they call you an international student. It's expensive for you compared to the local. Well, what other options do I have? Private universities do not offer agriculture as a means of study. Namibian vocational training facilities at that time didn't offer agriculture as a, as a field of study. So I was forced to go into another field, which is media and journalism. And I think through media and journalism, this is what led me to create this page. But those were the, the hands you, 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 you were dealt with. And every single time that what, what frustrated me was when I would hear the statements by established farmers, established professors, established ministers, standing there and saying that young people aren't involved in agriculture. It is not that young people aren't involved in agriculture or do not want to get involved. You refuse to see the, the few that want to be involved. And the few that want to be in, involved, we are being told this is not a business for us. I remember the same year I had attended another agricultural day. I went to the Bosmara one, the Bosmara Farmers Day. They held one here. And then I spoke to one professor, if I'm not mistaken, I think she was from... The University, Nam, the, University of Nam, the University of Namibia, I mean, Namibia, Namib, NAST, University of Science and Technology, Namibia, Namibia University of Science and Technology, NAST. She was from there. And then I asked her now, ma'am, uh, professor, from this 100 or 300 students of yours who study this field, how many of them go and get involved in the field of agriculture? She said, not many. Sorry. The bulk of this young men and women either end up doing other jobs. Some go become teachers, some go become uh, advisors to presidents, advisors to ministers, but no, none of them go back and go study and go do the work they, I mean, go do, um, go work in the field they studied. But then I asked them, uh, Prof, don't you think we're having a pandemic in the agricultural sector if that is the case? Because doctors are going into the medical field. Uh, 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 lawyers are becoming lawyers. Teachers are going into the teaching field. There is no diversion. No one goes studies medicine to be a doctor to end up in another field that has nothing to do with medicine. Imagine you study to be a doctor and you go end up working in the IT field. But you're a doctor. I know such rare cases, such rare cases do happen. But it's quite rare. But why is it that in the agricultural field, we still have this thing of this young man or this young woman studied agriculture but is not involved in the field of agriculture? Is not managing a farm, is not working at Midco and whatnot. Then I said, ha. Ah. But the problem also comes down to the agricultural sector in Namibia is quite small. A lot of this agricultural sector that exists in Namibia, it's either people doing it for themselves, which is wrong. My aunt, who, was, who is a global, a, glo a global trotter who traveled to different parts of the world, went to the United States and said, Mitchell, the Ministry of Agriculture, or they call it the what do they call it? The Department of Agriculture in the United States is one of their biggest uh, ministries, one of their biggest, as they call it departments, but one of their biggest ministries in the country because they take the agriculture very seriously. In Namibia, ours here is not really the biggest. It's supposed to be one of the biggest sectors, but it isn't. I know a lot of people say, but agriculture employs, yada, yada. Those are numbers they give us. But is it really the biggest sector in the field? I mean, in the Namibian economic sector, it isn't. We can ask how many young people today have graduated with PhDs, masters and normal degrees and diplomas and certificates in agriculture. How many of them are actually working in this field that is agriculture? It's quite rare. It's small. I remember 
when I was still in high school, and then they asked us, Mitchell, what you want to go? So, what are the three subjects that you, I mean, three courses you'd want to look at if they give you the choice of three courses? I said, I'd love to look at, uh, firstly, I'd love to look at uh, media and journalism because I'm a person who's very curious and loves to do research. And I believe the media should educate. Second one I'd love to look at is agriculture. Third one, probably I'd look at a thing like, uh, like what? A thing like uh, probably philosophy or law, you know, somewhere there, writing books and stuff. So, I said, those are the three fields I want to look at. Then she said, yeah, okay, agriculture, unless you are doing it for yourself. If your father and your mother have a farm, then you are good to go. It's good for you to go study it because at least you can plow back into your parents' farm. Um, because there's no job opportunities. How many people can employ you? There's Agra, which is the agricultural uh, agricultural uh, uh, shop where, where they sell agricultural products, whether it's medication, uh, farming implements, farming equipment, things to fix out your farm. They sell it. It's either you get uh, swallowed up by uh, Namib Mills, Namib Mills, at the mill side or you get swallowed up by Nam Darius or you get swallowed up by Mitko. If you don't get swallowed up by that guys, then you get swallowed by, by the other smaller uh, departments of agriculture. If they can swallow you up, then you are sitting at home with a degree in agriculture doing nothing. Unless you are farming there at your family's farm or family's village. But to say that I'm studying agriculture so I can come back and work and work in a sector of agriculture, it's, 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 it's quite small. I remember one friend of mine was telling me that um, there was once a vacancy at Mitko, something to do with animal husbandry. I think it was something to do with uh, the, 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 the feedlot Mitko is trying to establish. He said for that one vacancy, there were over, he said almost over 500 people that came for that, for that, for that, for that interview. I said that and I said, you? 500 people were called in for the interview. Then how, how, many, how many CVs were thrown in? Must have been a lot. That's all he said. Mitchell, I believe there were a lot. Because there is that problem. Right now, the agricultural sector, as we look at it, is still in its most in its most infant stages in Namibia. It is still that if you study agriculture, you're automatically going to end up on someone's farm. Either you're going to imagine, manage someone's farm, or you're either going to going to going to going to get a farm in in, in in farm, and you're going to get a farm in farm. It is not that if you go study agriculture, that you can come and start up something different within the agricultural sector. Maybe go into not just breeding cattle, but going to buying semen straws worldwide and storing them, creating a semen straw facility where you store all the stock semen bloodlines for, for people and you, sell, and you sell to them. Or you're coming and being inventive. You are, you, are, you are using the IT that is already there, but you're tailor-making it more for agriculture. Those are the different fields of agriculture that I feel that we need to, that we need to access, that we have not yet accessed. We are still at the most basic, which is planting, raising our cattle, and slaughtering and selling our cattle. We haven't yet reached the other stages. I know now in Namibia we're trying to introduce aquaculture, which is the farming of fish, which is a good thing. But that's one. We do aquaculture, cattle, we, we, we do the husbandry of all those things. But we haven't yet reached the next stages where we do agri-manufacturing. I was watching a video, I was watching um, an agricultural program, Lanbo, South Africa, where a guy is a mango farmer. Not just He doesn't just produce mangoes on his farm. Look, he, joined, he got into the farming sector, he's a, he's a senior man, but he got into the sector... Uh, because his father brought him in at the age of about, how old was he? He was 16. His father brought him in at the age of 16. A young man, youth in agriculture, brought in at that age. So the dad used to plant the mangoes. The boy learned and started evolving the company. From just planting, he plants, he bottles, he, he plants, he turns his mangoes into, into, into dried mangoes, dried, the dried mango uh, fruits we usually get when we buy dried fruit. He turns his mangoes into mango juices. He turns his mango into mango syrup. He cuts the mangoes and he packages them fresh and he closes them and he sells them to people. So he, he, he has literally evolved this agricultural business just from planting a mango to actually uh, turning the mango into, into products that is needed for the market. That is what uh, involvement of youth can be. And, 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 and that's what I believe. If, if there's enough involvement of young people in agriculture, we can start accessing these other fields, I mean, these other uh, levels of agriculture, not just stuck at uh, Mitchell should plant the maize and that's all. Mitchell can plant the maize, Mitchell can mill the maize, Mitchell can turn the maize into, into top score and produce his own, uh, uh, his own top score and sell it. He can produce his maize and use his maize for other products. Those are the spheres that I believe we need to access. And I believe it can be done with the involvement of young people and more job opportunities for young people who study this field. You know, like I said, it's rare that you hear a person study medicine and go ends up working in the IT field. It does happen, but it's rare. But in agriculture, you hear the person studied agriculture, but today he's a, he's a teacher or he's a principal of a school. It happens because these people do not have the opportunities to get that skill and knowledge they get. 
they got from the universities wherever they were studying to plow it back. And not just that, we need more agricultural colleges, bona fide agricultural colleges. I know there were a lot back in the day. Those ones need to be revived. So we can look at how we can transform our agricultural sector to stop relying on the South African one. Because right now we rely heavily on South Africa. Those are my two cents, guys. Yes, open the door, give the young people chairs at the table. But the young people are given the chairs at the table, need to do a good job. Remember, you are the ambassadors for the rest of the young, for the hundreds of young people that want to get involved in agriculture. If you are there, if you go mess up, well, you leave the older people going like, ah, you see. You see what we're saying. You see what we're saying. So those are my two cents, guys. Um, I just want to once again to say, if you like the videos that I'm putting out there, guys, um, if you enjoy these videos, like them, sub uh, subscribe, turn on your bell icon so you are notified of the future uploads that I do. And of course, share them, man. Share them out there to the community. Maybe probably somebody would like what I'm saying and would actually learn from here. For now, guys, enjoy your first day. Enjoy it further. Have a good day. Bye for now.